ready 10 seconds as a stenographer previous year 2016 dictation matter start on rebel speaker i am very grateful to you for allowing me to participate on a very important and critical bill which has come before this august house i am sure this bill will mark a beginning of a new era in the field of information revolution sir all modern societies or any society for that matter will require a strong and purposeful government to steer them in our own country the government expenditure accounts for nearly 30% of our gross national product both at the central level and at the level of states and local bodies at the same time we find that social and economic imperatives require our government to intervene in all economic and social affairs therefore i feel that the efficiency and effectiveness of governmental processes are the critical variables this will determine how we are functioning and to what extent we are able to discharge the responsibilities entrusted to us by our electorate sir as far as power of the government is concerned i have always believed that it is the sacred trust that the society has given to the government we as part of the government have to spend in taking into account the good of the largest number of people therefore it becomes all the more obligatory on our part to see that there is right correlation between the expenditure and efficiency it is a common knowledge that we all talk about wastefulness of expenditure and about corruption prevailing in our system hence it is very important for us to explore new and effective mechanism to ensure that we all do our duties with a sense of responsibility this is the guiding spirit behind this right to information bill that is now under consideration of this august house sir now the question comes as to what is the secret of successful functioning of any democratic institution in my view the key to the successful functioning of any democratic polity lies in the ability of a citizen to observe and evaluate the functioning of their elected representatives the common man should be able to make an informed judgment about the performance of their elected representatives this is possible only if there is an easy availability of necessary information for a citizen to arrive at a decision then we have got the system to checks and balances at different levels this system has made all of us proud of our ability to match the goal of economic development in in this context i would say that it is the common men and the common women of this country who is the focal point of our democratic system he or she is the seeker of information and the final judge of our performance this government sir has made a commitment not only to work for the welfare of the common men but also to strengthen his or her role as the architect of our destiny it is in this background that today we are discussing this right to information bill in this house this is possible only when our institutions function in a transparent responsive and accountable manner the right to information bill sir will bring into force another right that will empower the decision in this regard this will bring into effect a critical right for enforcing other rights this will also provide an opportunity to fill a vital gap in this regard the bill under consideration is more far reaching and effective i am very grateful to all concerned for having played a very important role in bringing into focus major drawbacks in the legislation the present bill has the widest possible reach covering the central government the state governments panchayati raj institutions local bodies and so on this bill talks about access to information which is simple easy time bound and inexpensive it has provided for certain stringent penalties for failing to provide information in any way 
In fact, the bill has imposed certain obligations on agencies and organizations to disclose information. Sir, one of the important features of the present bill is the independent appeal mechanism through the appointment of central and straight information commissioners. This mechanism has made the right a potent instrument for good governance. Sir, here I would like to say that many honorable members have raised many concerns and questions during the course of this discussion on this bill. I would only like to say that everyone should see the bill in a positive spirit and not as a draconian law for the purpose of paralyzing the government. This is an instrument for improving the relationship between the government and its citizens so, so that it becomes a friendly, caring and effective government functioning for the good of our people. I hope that this would be you used towards better performance. Sir, we are happy to discuss the agricultural problems today in this house. Ours is an agricultural country. 60% of the people are dependent on agriculture. Our main economy depends on agriculture. When we look at the character of agriculture in the country, we find that even today we are dependent on monsoons. If the monsoons are good, our agriculture is good. If the monsoons are not good, our entire agricultural sector will fail. That goes to say that in spite of the development in science and technology, we are mainly dependent on rain gold for this agriculture. We need to look into the problems of the farmers. The main problem of the farmer is that we do not have a scientific approach. We have got the prestigious institution called the Indian Council of Agricultural Research on the one side. On the other side, we have got our farmers in rural areas of the country. This shows that the development in science and technology is not reaching the farm sector. Our farmer has got the same old seeds that he used to put. He is not able to generate more of food grains. On the other hand, the western countries are producing high varieties of seeds. Now coming to the cattle, the 60% of our farmers today are dependent on cattle like the cows, the sheep or the buffaloes. They get some milk from them and generate some income out of it. My plea is that if the scientists are able to reach these farmers, they can get better variety of breed and with that they can get a better income. Today our farmers are not able to use the modern scientific technologies. There are so many agricultural implements in the market but our farmers are not able to use them for farming. Today, our farmers require financial help in the form of loan or subsidy. But when a farmer goes to a bank for the crop loan, he is not looked after well. We have got the directives from the planning commission about the grant of loans to farmers. But our bankers are not paying any heed to it. They are not coming forward to give loans to the farmers. This way, the purpose of nationalization of banks is totally defeated. Coming to insurance, we have got the health insurance scheme. In the same way, we also should have crop insurance. We should see to it that each farmer should get an insurance cover for his crop. In this way, if the crops get damaged, they would get some compensation. We have to make all out efforts to see that the farmers get full compensation. If this is done, we will be able to help the farmer and also the economy. Now I would like to say something about marketing. I must say here that marketing is a big thing. The government should see to it that our farmers are provided good marketing facilities. This will keep them to get remunerative price. As far as farmers are concerned, we find that they are in a very distressed state. We have to ponder over the fact as to why farmers are in such a state of distress. A farmer has to face a lot of problems right from the sowing of the crop 
to taking the final product to the market. He faces difficulty in getting good quality seeds, fertilizers and water for irrigation. We have often noticed that the farmer keeps struggling to arrange for these requirements. The farmer is facing a great burden regarding cultivation. The farmer has to mortgage his land for meeting his daily requirements. This has resulted in an increase of suicide cases amongst farmers. It is a matter to be taken up attentively as to why the farmers are committing suicide. This is a very unfortunate situation. Unless we formulate proper policies for farmers, cases of farmers' suicide shall not cease and they cannot move forward. The Honorable Minister made an announcement the other day saying that the townships and cities should be improved. I have no bias against the towns and cities. Towns and cities should be provided with funds. But the fact remains that the villages should also be enabled to grow and improve. We are finding as access to villages by way of the central scheme of providing rural roads. At the same time, the streets in the villages should also be improved. Arrangements should be made for imparting education to the children of the farmers. Unless this is done, farmers cannot make progress in the actual sense of the term. We have to take urgent steps to mitigate the problems of farmers and the problem of the country. What is needed today is a long-term plan.